Hello and welcome to your last Geometry Summer course. This is it. This is class 16. After this class, all you have left is your final. So let's get started with the last topic. Remember that all the topics from this week will be on your final this Friday. So with that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. So today we're going to talk about graphing equations. Now we're going to talk about graphing linear equations and we're also going to talk about um, writing slopes for linear equations, including parallel and perpendicular lines. So with that in mind, let's first look at this example. How do we graph an equation? Now, prior, we reviewed graphing an equation by constructing a table of values. And it is correct, but sometimes, especially when we take certain tests, we don't have the opportunity to create a table of values. So how do I graph this function? Well, one thing that we need to understand or review is the slope-intercept form, which I wrote here and I also wrote over here. Now, the slope-intercept form is used to graph linear functions, and it's always written as y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept, okay? Now, it's always good that whenever we have an equation like this one, we identify who our slope is and which number our y-intercept is. And the reason we do that is because that's going to give us the information that we need to graph the function. So if I look here at y equals negative 2 thirds x, the slope is always going to be the constant of the number that has the variable. In other words, since it's negative 2 thirds x, that means that the slope is going to be negative 2 thirds and the y-intercept, or the b, is always going to be the number that follows, which in this case is negative 1. Now, one thing that we need to always remember is that whenever we are looking for a y-intercept, x equals 0. So in reality, this is 0 and negative 1. Now, it is very important to understand that. And the reason that it is very important to understand that is because that is going to be the first point I'm going to graph. So again, I look at this equation. Whenever you solve an equation, or whenever you write an equation, or graph an equation that is a slope-intercept form, it is very important to assure ourselves that our equation is solved for y. So the first thing I'm going to do is verify that this equation is solved for y, which it is. If it was not solved for y, like we're going to see a little bit later on, then you have to first solve it for y and do certain steps. Okay? So it's solved for y. Once I know that it's solved for y, then it's going to be to identify my slope. Remember, m means slope. And the slope is the number that has the, the x variable in this case, or the constant that has the x variable, which in this case, the slope is negative 2 thirds. And the y-intercept, which is b, which is the number in this case, um, negative 1. And whenever we're looking for our y-intercept, x is 0. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to graph this. Now, I'm going to construct my coordinate plane. And the first point I'm going to graph is 0 and negative 1. So 0 and negative 1 is down here. Okay, now it's very important that I understand my slope. So my, I'm going to write my slope again here just to explain something real quick. My slope is negative 2 thirds. Now, the negative sign can be between both the numerator and denominator. The fraction doesn't really matter because it's going to apply to the entire thing. But the important um, concept or thing that you want to re remember here is that Whenever I have a slope, it's y over x. So actually, 2 is y and 3 is x. Now, why is it so important? Because from this ordered pair right here is where I'm going to graph my other equation. Now, because y is 2 or negative 2 to be exact, that means that from this ordered pair, I'm going to count two spaces down. So this is going to be 1 and 2, OK? And because x is positive 3, that means that I'm going to count, I go, I go down two spaces, 1 and 2, and then I count three spaces to the right. So 1, 2, and 3, and this is where more or less is going to be, and that's how I'm going to graph it, guys. So that would be how I graph my function. Okay, very easy, very simple, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing too complicated. I'm going to recap it real quick. I have this equation. The first thing I want to do is make sure that the equation is solved for y, which in this case it is. Secondly, identify the slope. The slope is actually negative 2 thirds, and the y-intercept is negative 1. 
Now remember that you always need to remember that whenever I have a y-intercept x equals zero, so that means I'm actually going to graph the first order pair as zero and negative one. And because my slope is a fraction, negative two thirds to be exact, what I'm going to do is simply move two spaces down because x is negative two, so one, two. And because x is three, that would be three spaces to the right, so one, two, and three. I um, kind of graph the points and I connect the line and that's it. I'm going to do one more example before we move on to the other part. Okay, so I'm actually going to step out of the camera just to make sure that everything is working perfectly on my end and that the problem can be seen. I'm actually going to move the camera a little bit and see if I can zoom in just to give you guys a couple of seconds to see what I did there. Okay, so if you notice again, I just identified the slope, which is negative two-thirds, the y-intercept, which is negative one. Whenever I'm looking for an x-intercept, that means that x is, the y-intercept, excuse me, that means that x is zero, so I graph zero, negative one, and because my slope is always y over x, two is negative, um, I go down two spaces and three spaces to the right. So I'm actually going to erase that graph right now and I'm going to do one more before I move on to the other examples. Okay, so what if I have an equation that is not solved for x? For y? What if I have an equation like what if I have something like 2x plus 3y equals 6. So if my equation is not solved for y, I want to solve it. And I do that by getting rid of the x. So if it says 2x plus 3y, I'm going to subtract 2x minus 2x. This is going to cancel out. I have 3y equals um, 6 minus 2x. And I'm going to divide by 3 to get rid of the y. And that would be 6 divided by 3 is 2, minus 2 thirds x. So now I'm just going to flip them around, and I'm going to write my final answer as negative 2 thirds x plus, I mean, yes, x, excuse me. Let me write that better. x plus 2. So I solved my equation for y. The first thing I did was... Um, I got rid of the x by subtracting 6 minus 2x. I can't subtract, so that leaves me with 3y equals 6 over 3 minus 2x. I divided 6 over 3, which is 2. And then, since x, if you notice the slope-intercept form, x has to be first, so I just move them around. And that's why it says negative 2x plus 2. And now, I can identify my slope and my y-intercept and graph. So my slope is, once again, negative 2 thirds and my y-intercept is actually 2, so that means that the ordered pair is 0 and positive 2. Remember, whenever you're looking for a y-intercept, x always equals 0. So now I'm actually going to go ahead and graph it, and I think I have some space here. And the first ordered pair that I have, or that I'm going to graph, is 0 and 2, so 0 is always the origin and two spaces up, that would be one and two. Now, if you notice, my slope is negative two thirds, which means that I'm gonna go down two spaces and I'm gonna go right three spaces. So one and two, and then I count three spaces to the right. One, two, three, and then I just plot my points. Now, what if my Slope is not a fraction. Let's look at that one, okay? So let me step out of camera just to make sure that everything's working fine on my side. Always making sure that the blur video doesn't go blurry or that the numbers are seen accordingly. And that also gives you a chance to see what I did. So again, all I did was I solved for y by subtracting 2x. And that leaves me with 3y equals 6 minus 2x. Then what I did is I divided everything by 3, which um, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So that's where that 2 comes from. Um, and negative two-thirds, I leave it expressed, or minus two-thirds as x, excuse me, I leave it expressed. Then I simply switch the positions, and I move minus two-thirds x first, and since the two is a positive, that's why it says negative two-thirds x plus two. My slope is negative two-thirds, my y-intercept is zero and two, or it's two, but if I'm looking for a y-intercept, x equals zero, so I go up two spaces, 
And then, because my slope is negative two-thirds, I count down two spaces and three spaces to the right. That's where I get my other ordered pair, and I cross. Now I'm going to do one where the slope is not a fraction. What if, I, what if you have an equation that is given to you by the line or the formula? y equals 5x plus 3. Now, the first thing I want to see is if the graph, the equation is solved for y. In this case, it is, so I don't have to do that step. Secondly, is to identify the slope. So the slope for this function is actually 5. The y-intercept is 3. Now remember that whenever I'm looking for my y-intercept, x is 0. So in reality, that is 0 and 3. Now I'm going to graph my function. And I'm going to graph the order pair 0 and 3. So 1, 2, 3. But I have a slope. Now the slope is just 5, right? So how do I graph the slope if it's just 5? So for graphing purposes, remember that all numbers or all real numbers are rational. And what uh, or let me let me not let me explain that better. The majority of all real numbers can be expressed as a rational expression because you do have the rational numbers. But but most real numbers can be expressed as a rational expression. And what a rational expression means is that they're all um, a fraction. And what I simply mean by that is that I can just write this 5 as 5 over 1, okay, and turn it into a fraction. So what that means is I'm going to count 5 spaces up from 0, 3. That's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 and 1 space to the right. So that's where my graph is going to be. And then I'm just going to graph the order pair. And that's it. So I gave you three examples of how to graph linear functions. Along with this video is going to be some uh, practice problems for you to graph functions. But obviously we're not over because now we're going to talk about writing equations and writing equations for perpendicular and parallel lines. So let me actually go ahead and erase all this. And let's get started with the next example. So writing equations. Now graphing equations, we already discussed that. Now writing equations of lines. Now of course we're talking about writing equations of lines, but we're talking about linear functions. And I'm actually going to go ahead and see if I can focus the camera more towards this side. See if I can just adjust the image there. Okay, so we're going to talk about writing equations of lines, of linear functions to be exact. Now we already worked with the first formula, which is the slope-intercept form, which means y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. But we also have the point-slope form. Now the point-slope form is a little bit different. It says y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. It's very similar to the slope formula we were working on um, in yesterday's video. So what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is take a look at this example. It says write an equation of a line where the slope is 3 fourths and the y-intercept is negative 2. So we're not graphing. We are just writing the equation. Now, we always want to write the equation of a line, specifically a linear function, as y equals mx plus b. So the first thing I wanted, I'm going to do is just write the y equals mx plus b formula. Just so I remember it and all I do is plug them in. So they're giving me the slope. The problem is giving me the slope. The slope is 3 fourths. So I'm just going to write y equals, instead of mx, I'm going to plug in the slope, which is 3 fourths. So it's actually going to be 3 fourths x. And they're saying that b equals negative 2. So I can write plus negative 2 or y equals 3 fourths x plus uh, minus 2. So if you write y equals 3 fourths x plus negative 2 or y equals 3 fourths x minus 2, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter because subtracting is the same thing as adding a negative. So that's, that's it for that example because they just want you to write the equation and they're pretty, the problem is pretty much giving you the slope, which is 3 fourths, and it's giving you the y-intercept, which is negative 2. All you need to do is just plug them into the equation as either 
um, y equals 3 fourth x plus negative 2 or y equals 3 fourth x minus 2. Okay? So it's always very important that you know this formula. I'm actually going to erase it and then we're going to do the other example which is beneath it. Now the other example says write an equation of a line that passes through 5, 4 and has a slope of 3. So here we cannot go straight into the um, y equals mx plus b formula because they're not giving us a y-intercept. They're saying that the slope is 3, but they're also saying that the y-intercept is an ordered pair. So what do I do? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is write my slope formula y equals mx plus b and realize what I can plug in. The only thing I can plug in is y equals 3x and that's it. I can't do anything else because I don't know the value of b and I don't know the value of y so I can't use that. So if you can't use the slope intercept form what you're going to do is use the point slope form and from the point slope form we're going to get our, our slope intercept form and I know that sounds kind of uh, you know, um, like a tongue twister. I'm actually going to finish the problem over here. So once again, the problem is giving us the ordered pair, which is 5 and 4, and they're telling us that the slope equals 3. We cannot use y equals mx plus b. We can't use this. We cannot use it because I don't have any information. So what I'm actually going to use is the slope, the point slope form, which is y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. So from that formula, I can obtain um, my slope intercept formula. All I need to do is plug in the numbers. So what I'm actually going to say is y minus y sub 1, which is 4, because that's the number that we have there, 4, equals m, which is our slope, and our slope is 3, times x minus x sub 1, which is going to be 5. So the y minus 4, this side of the equation, is not going to change. It's going to stay expressed. And I'm going to multiply 3 times x, which is 3x, 3 times 5, which is minus 15. Then I'm almost there. All I need to do now is just um, isolate the y. So in order for me to isolate the y, I have to get rid of the 4. So if this is a y minus 4, I simply add 4. This side is going to cancel out y equals, I bring down the 3x, and negative 15 plus 4 is negative 11, so y equals 3x minus 11. And that's it. That is my answer. Um, I couldn't use a slope intercept form. I used the point slope form. I plugged in the numbers that, they, that were given to me. That's why instead of writing m, I wrote 3. That's why instead of writing y sub 1, I wrote 4. That's why instead of writing x sub 1, I wrote um, 5 or minus 5, I multiply 3 times x, which is 3x, and 3 times minus 5, which is minus 15. y minus 4 equals 3x minus 15, so I add 4 on both sides. Negative 15 plus 4 is negative 11. y equals 3x minus 11, and that's it. That's it for that example. I have one more, then we're going to see the parallel and perpendicular lines, all right? So let me erase this real quick, and let's actually solve the last example of writing. Um, linear equations, and then we're going to actually write, work with our parallel and perpendicular. Now the problem says, the problem reads, write an equation, write an equation of the line, that passes through zero four negative one and two. Okay, so I can't use the slope intercept form because I don't have um, the slope. I can't use the point slope form because I don't have the slope. 
So the first thing I'm going to do in this problem is calculate the slope. Then when I calculate the slope, I can use this formula and then I can eventually get my other formula. So the first thing I want to do is calculate the slope. This is going to be my x sub 1, my y sub 1, x sub 2, and y sub 2. So m is going to equal 2 minus 4 over negative 1 minus 0. And 2 minus 4 is negative 2, and negative 1 minus 0 is negative 1, and that's going to equal positive 2. So my slope is 2. Um, now that I have my slope, I can use the slope intercept form. But the question is, which one of the two pairs am I going to use? Am I going to use the 0, 4, or am I going to use the negative 1 and 2? Okay, so let me explain what I mean. So I have y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. Now I have my m because it equals 2, right? And let me just write that down here. I know x and I know y, but which of the two pairs am I going to use to substitute the x sub 1 and the y sub 1. Am I going to use 0, 4? Am I going to use negative 1, 2? The reality is that you could use either of them because this is a linear function. So I'm just going to go ahead and use 0, 4. So I'm going to say y minus 0 equals 2 times x minus um, 4. I'm sorry. y minus 4, which is my y sub 1, equals 2 times x minus 0. So y minus 4 stays the same. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 0 is 0, so that would be minus 0. I'm going to add 4. And y, I'm going to write it down here. y equals 2x plus 4. Now, what would have happened if instead of using 0, 4, I would use negative 1 and 2? So technically, I'm supposed to get the same answer. We'll verify. Now, what? Let, let's say I did the same thing, but instead of using 0 and 4, I used negative 1 and 2. So I'm actually going to do it on this side, which means I'm going to switch the camera a little bit to the other side, just making sure that everyone can see me. And again, I'm just going to do the same problem. Let me adjust that. Okay, let me explain that real quick because I realized that some of the problems might have... Okay, guys, so what I did was first calculated the slope, which is y sub 2 minus y sub 1, which in this case is 2 minus 4, over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, negative 1 minus 0. 2 minus 4 is negative 2, negative 1 minus 0 is negative 1. I divide that and that equals 2. My slope is 2. So now I use these point slope form, okay? And instead of writing y sub 1, I, I, so what I'm going to use, I'm sorry, so I use the point slope form and I pick one of the ordered pairs. I pick the ordered pairs 0 and 4. I could have just as well picked 1 and negative 1 and 2, which I'm going to do in a minute. And what I did was instead of writing y minus y sub 1, I wrote y minus 4, m, which is the 2 that I calculated. Instead of writing x minus x sub 1, I wrote x minus 0. Brought down the y minus 4, multiply 2 times x, which is 2x, and 2 times 0, which is 0. Add 4 on both sides. This side cancels out. y equals, I pass the 2x, and 0 plus 4 is 4. So that would be my equation. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but instead of using 0 and 4, I'm going to use negative 1 and 2. So let me erase all this. What would have happened if I decided if I decided to use negative 1 and 2? Now, you can choose whichever one you want. I'm just illustrating both so that you know that it's going to work either way. Um, I'm going to say instead of writing y minus y sub 1, I'm going to write y minus 2. Instead of writing, oh, the slope stays the same. That doesn't change. But instead of writing x minus x sub 1, I write x minus negative 1. And y minus 2 doesn't change. Um, and I multiply 2 times x, which is actually 2x, and 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2, so minus negative 2. Now remember, this is going to turn into a positive, so y minus 2 equals 2x plus 2. So now, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to add 2. This side is going to cancel out. I'm going to write my answer here y equals 2x 
and 2 plus 2 is 4. So as you can see guys, regardless of which ordered pair I decide to use, I'm going to get the same equation. You do not have to do them twice. You can probably do them twice if you want to check your answer, but it's not a requirement. So I'm going to give you guys a minute to look at the exercises, review the video, pause if you want to, and then when you unpause, we're going to be back discussing the same thing, but with um, parallel and perpendicular lines. Okay, so now we're going to talk about writing equations but determining if they're parallel or perpendicular lines. Now yesterday we said that in, in, in the slopes of parallel lines, well, lines were equal. In other words, m equals m. And the slope of perpendicular lines perpendicular lines were the negative reciprocal reciprocal and what that means is that one line is going to be m and the other one is 1 over negative m. So that means that 1 is going to be a fraction or the inverse of a fraction. 1 is going to be negative and the other one is going to be positive. Now what we're going to see in these next examples is how do we work with that using the slope intercept form and using the point slope form. How do we determine? Now, in the exercises that I assigned to you guys, you're actually going to have to do this for both, determine which one's parallel, which one's perpendicular. But it's really easy. So the first one says write the equation of a parallel line. So we're going to do the equation of a parallel line for this one, and also the equation of a perpendicular line for this one. So let's start with the parallel line. Now we all know that the slopes of a parallel line are the same, so m equals m. Which means that my first equation says y equals 3x plus 7. So the slope of my second equation has to be y equals 3x. Now what I don't know is what number the y-intercept is. And how do I find that? Well, I use the point-slope form. All right? So I'm going to use the point-slope form. So I have one equation. So I'm going to say x minus x sub 1 equals m top, or excuse me, y minus y sub 1. equals m times x minus x of 1. So again, if they're parallel, that means that they're going to have the same slope. So m is going to be 3, y minus. Now, if you notice, in the original problem, they gave us the first equation along with the ordered pair. So these are the numbers that we're going to plug in this formula. So y minus y sub 1 is going to be y minus 3, x minus x sub 1 is going to be x minus 2. And then what I'm going to do is just distribute. So this is actually going to be 3x minus 6, because 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. Bring down the y minus 3. I'm going to add 3 on both sides. This is going to cancel out. y equals 3x. And negative 6 plus 3 is 3. So y equals 3x is going to be my second equation, and my first equation is y equals 3x plus 7. So I'm actually going to write them down here, parallel, and it's going to be y equals 3x plus 7, y equals 3x minus 3. Now, I found the parallel line of that equation, now I want to find the perpendicular line of that equation. So how do I find the perpendicular line of this. Okay, so to find the perpendicular line, I have my original equation, y equals 3x plus 7. The ordered pair is 2 and 3. Now, remember that a perpendicular line mean, means it's going to be the negative reciprocal. Now, the negative reciprocal means to take this slope and write it as a fraction. So instead of writing 3, I'm going to write 1 third. 
and instead of right and being positive 3, or your 1 third is going to be negative. So I know that this is going to be the slope I'm going to use. Now to find the rest of the equation, I plug in these two numbers again into the uh, point slope formula. So I'm going to say y minus, instead of um, saying y sub 1, I'm going to say 3 equals my slope. My slope is not going to be 3 like it was here. My slope is going to be negative 1 third, so I'm going to say equals negative 1 third times x minus 2. So negative 1 third or y minus 3 equals negative 1 third x and negative 1 third times negative 2 would be plus 2 thirds. Now I have to add 3 on both sides. And this is going to be, this is going to cancel out. Um, I'm actually going to continue it down here. y equals negative 1 third x. So I have 3 plus 2 thirds, or 2 thirds plus 3. Okay, uh, I'm actually going to erase this equation that I did here, the work that I did here. And I'm going to continue it on this side. So let me just kind of draw the arrows in where I'm finishing it. So I have y minus, or y equals um, negative 1 third x plus 2 thirds plus 3. So I have to solve this now. So I can use the butterfly method, which is basically writing 3 over 1 and then cross multiplying. 3 times 1 is 3. 2 times 1 is 2, and 3 times 3 is 9, y equals negative 1 third x plus. Now that my denominators are the same, y equals negative 1 third x plus 11 over 3. So my perpendicular line, one equation is going to be y equals 3x plus 7 and y equals negative one third x plus 11 over three. So these are the per and So this is what my graph would look like if they were parallel. Let me see if I can move the camera ever so slightly to the other side and adjust. So if I see, let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit right there. So where it says perpendicular, one line is going to be y equals 3x plus 7. The other line um, equation is going to be y equals negative 1 third x plus 11 over 3. So that's how you work that one. We're going to do the last example in just a minute. And again, the good thing about it is you can always pause and rewind. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out real quick just so you guys can see the whole process. Okay, let me explain it real quick again. So what I did is to write the perpendicular line, I took my original equation, which was y equals three x plus seven. The ordered pair, which is two and three. I have to remember that in a perpendicular line, the slope is gonna be the negative reciprocal, which means that if this is three x, the negative reciprocal is negative one third x. So I plug these numbers into the point slope formula. Instead of writing y minus y sub 1, I wrote y minus 3. Instead of writing m, I wrote negative 1 third. Instead of writing x minus x sub 1, I wrote x minus 2. I multiplied negative 1 third times x, which is negative 1 third x. I multiplied negative 1 third times 2, which is uh, times negative 2, which is positive 2 thirds. I add 3. This is why this cancels out. And I have um, y equals negative 1 third x plus 2 thirds plus 3. I used the butterfly method, which means I um, wrote 3 over 1, and then I multiplied 3 times 1, which is 3, which is where I got these numbers. 2 times 1, which is 2, and 3 times 3, which is 9. Now that my denominators are the same, um, that would be 2 plus 9, which is 11, and meaning my final answer is y equals negative 1 third x plus um, 11 over 3. So now let's do the last exercise of this video, the last example of this video, and the last example of your geometry summer course. You guys must be pretty excited. Can't blame you. 
And let's look at the last example. Now the last example says 4x plus 3y equals, let's see if I can adjust the lens real quick just to make sure that you are all there and there's the problem. Okay. Now the exercise says 4x plus 3y equals 8. The p just is just the letter or point. And it's 4 and negative 2, and this is that they want us to write the equation of a perpendicular and parallel lines. Now, the problem that I have here is that this equation is not solved for y. So I'm actually going to solve it for y first. So my first step is to say 4x plus 3y equals 8. And I have to solve for y. So let me go ahead and adjust the lens of the camera. Pardon me. And there we go. So the first step is to solve that for y. So how do I solve this for y? The same way I did prior, just get rid of the x. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 4x. And this is going to cancel out. And so it's going to be 3y equals 8 minus 4x divided by 3. This is going to cancel out y equals 8 over 3 minus 4 over 3x. But remember, if I want to write it into slope intercept form, that means I have to switch these around. So it's actually going to be y equals 8 over 3 minus, I'm sorry, negative 4 over 3x plus 8 over 3. So this is what my equation is supposed to look like. Now I can find parallel and perpendicular lines. Let's work with the perpendicular line. So I'm going to find the equation of a perpendicular line. I'm going to go ahead and write the problem, or write the equation. y equals negative 4 third x plus a over 3. And I'm going to use this ordered pair, which was given to me in my problem, which is 4 and negative 2. Now, if I'm going to write or find the equation of a perpendicular line, I need to take that slope and invert it. So it's not going to be negative 4 over 3. It's actually going to be positive 3 over 4. Okay, so what I do now is plug everything into the point-slope formula. So instead of writing x minus x sub 1, which is what I have here, or, I'm sorry, instead of writing y minus y sub 1, I'm going to write y minus negative 2 equals, instead of writing the slope that I got, which was negative 4 thirds, I'm going to write the negative reciprocal, which is the opposite, which would be, instead of negative 4 thirds, I flip that upside down, it's 3 fourths, but instead of being negative, it's going to be positive, so I'm going to write 3 fourths, Times. Again, guys, this is the tricky part, so I'm going to say that again. The negative reciprocal of 4 thirds is to take the equation and invert it. That's why I turned it into 3 fourths and the opposite sign. What that means is that if this um, slope is negative, the reciprocal must be positive. So instead of writing x minus x sub 1, it would be x minus 4. And now all I need to do, guys, is just solve. So y minus negative 2 turns into y plus 2. 3 fourth times x is 3 fourth x. And 3 fourth times 4, 4 times 3 is 12, divided by 4 is 3, so that's actually minus 3. All right. Now I'm going to continue to solve, so I'm going to subtract 2, subtract 2. This is going to cancel out y equals 3 fourth x. And negative 3 minus 2 is 5. So I have my perpendicular equation. I'm going to write it right here. Perpendicular. I'm actually going to abbreviate it because I don't have enough space. I'm just going to write perp, but it's perpendicular. And one equation is y equals negative 4 third x plus root 3. And the other line is actually y equals 3 fourth x um, minus 5. 
So those are my perpendicular lines and they're perpendicular because this slope is negative 4 over 3. This slope is actually the opposite of that, which is positive 3 fourths. So I have my perpendicular line. Now I'm going to search for my parallel line, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and erase this. The equation still continues to be the one that I solved for y, so that's not going to change. What's going to change is that instead of looking for a perpendicular line, I'm now going to be searching for a parallel line, okay? So parallel. Now, the equation continues to be the same. The ordered pair continues to be the same. It's now that instead of writing y minus y sub 1, I write y minus um, negative 2 again. Instead of writing m, if the lines are parallel, remember that means that the slopes are the same. So the slope is going to be negative 4 thirds times... Instead of writing x minus x sub 1, I write x minus 4. And now I solve. So y minus negative 2 turns into y plus 2. Negative 4 thirds times x is negative 4 over 3x. And negative 4 thirds times negative 4, well remember 4 times 4 is 16. And 16 over 3, so that would be plus 16 over 3. Now I solve, and I have to use the butterfly method again, so it's going to be y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 16 over 3 minus 2. Now we use the butterfly method, guys, which is writing the 2 over 1. I'm actually going to continue that equation here. I'm actually going to erase this. And I'm going to continue the equation over here. So y, right a little bit closer, y equals negative 4 over 3x plus um, 16 over 3 minus 2 over 1. So I'm just going to leave everything here expressed the same. So this would be 3 times 1 is 3, 16 times 1 is 16, and 2 times 3 is 6. So now that my denominators are the same, that would be y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 16 minus 6 is 10, so that would be plus 10 over 3. And that is my parallel, the other parallel line, which means that my answer for my parallel lines is going to be y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 8 over 3. And the other line is y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 10 over 3. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and step out of camera, let you guys see that real quick. You can pause and rewind, hopefully. I'm going to adjust this again, just to make sure. So again, guys, all I did to find my parallel line was to the equation that I had already solved for y. Remember that if they are parallel, the slopes have to be the same. So that's why the slope stays the same. And I just plug in the numbers. So instead of writing y minus y sub 1, I wrote y minus negative 2. Instead, uh, the slope stays the same, so it stays as negative 4 thirds. Instead of writing x minus x sub 1, I wrote x minus 4. y minus negative 2 turns into y plus 2. I multiply negative 4 thirds or times x, which is negative 4 thirds x, and negative 4 thirds times 4, which is plus 16 over 3. I subtract um, 2 on both sides. So what happens here is that this side cancels out, and then I have negative 4 thirds x plus negative uh, plus 16 over 3 minus 2. I write 2 over 1, and then I'm going to adjust the camera so you guys see what I did next. After that, guys, all I did was I continued it over here. 
So all I did was use the butterfly method, which means 3 times 1 is 3, which is where I got that. 16 times 1 is 16. 2 times 3 is 6. 16 minus 6 is 10. So my final answer is y equals negative 4 third x plus 10 over 3. Just to once again show you guys my final answer over there, meaning that my parallel lines are now y equals negative 4 third x plus 8 over 3 and y equals negative 4 third x plus 10 over 3. Guys, I know that this can be kind of dizzifying. Hopefully you guys are getting it. If you have any questions, you guys know where to find me. And I am going to leave this video lesson up to here. This is the last video lesson of the course. So along with these ex um, videos, I'm sorry, along with this video is going to be a series of exercises that you guys are going to be answering. Tomorrow is, or Thursday, I'll see you guys in the virtual classrooms. So stay safe and bye-bye.